I heard the Lord say, it will be staggered. I knew he was referring to the wealth transfer uh, and the abundance, the, the pouring out, um, the blessings that we're, we're expecting and hoping for and looking for. And the context uh, this morning was I was just spending time with the Lord and, and loving on him, praising him, uh, really weeping before him. And uh, I'm a giver and I have a history of giving, uh, not only tithes, which he owns, those are his, uh, but offerings, including a house uh, over the years. And so uh, I was just thinking of all the ways um, that I could bless the ministries that I'm connected to and others that I, I desire to be connected to um, when, when the provision is there. And uh, just uh, how I just couldn't wait to pour out uh, that which uh, will be coming. Uh, so it was in that context, and it was during those precious moments that I heard his precious voice say, it will be staggered. So I knew immediately what he was talking about. Um, and, and so I, I looked at the word uh, staggered, to stagger something, uh, and it means to arrange so that things happen at different times to arrange in a series of alternating or continually overlapping intervals of time. So I think many of us maybe have thought that, that uh, suddenly millions of dollars would be plunked in our, our uh, accounts, uh, that overnight, and I, I believe there will be some of that, maybe a, a great deal of that. Uh, so this may not be for everyone. Uh, but I, I suspect it's for many, if not most of us. Uh, and it's a great blessing uh, that it will be staggered. Um, so the Lord uh, then reminded me of a word that he had given me on September the 1st. Uh, and it, it is an example, I believe, of uh, how things are, are going to operate, of, of uh, how things might be happening. Um, what he said to me on that morning, and I believe this is for, for all of you, whosoever will. Um, he said, I've called you to be a storehouse so that you may feed many. Uh, of course, that hearkens to Joseph. Um, a storehouse is used to house resources. So not just uh, financial, uh, food, resources, whatever's needed, whatever's needed. And think of the spiritual context um, it's an abundant supply or source of supply. It's a place where something is deposited for future use. So the Lord has called us to be storehouses uh, for his glory, uh, for his, uh, his praise, uh, for joy, for peace, uh, for life, for, for healing. Uh, for all the gifts uh, of the Spirit that, that are needed, whatever is needed. Uh, storehouses of His power, His resurrection power. And yes, storehouses of provision uh, for those uh, when there's a need. Um, so let's look at the storehouses in Scripture. And, and at the time, and, and again today, He's quickening the, the whole story of Joseph. Um, and I believe that he showed me that, that, that first there is a, a preparation or an accumulation period in which the Lord is making deposits in his storehouse. Again, we are the storehouse. Uh, but if you look at Genesis 41, uh, verses 34 through 37, when Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream of the seven lean cows, or fat cows, and then the seven lean cows, um, the seven fat ears of corn, and then the seven uh, lean ears of corn. Uh, so he interpreted the dream for Pharaoh, and he said, you know, what the Lord is showing you is that there will be seven years of plenty, followed by years of, of seven years of famine. So he said to Pharaoh, take action, take action. Then let them gather all the food of these good years that are coming and store up the grain. And let, let them guard it, let the grain be guarded. 
and let the food become as a reserve for the land. So we see there's a period of, of preparation, of accumulation, of filling the storehouse. And I believe we've been in that time, uh, that season, that the, those years of, of being used by God uh, as his storehouse, uh, as his reserve, um, as, as his supply uh, for a time that it's needed. And that time, I believe, is now. So then, uh, when the famine hits, and I want to remind you of what Amos tells us, uh, and I believe this is, this is a, the time that we're in as well. Uh, not just a natural famine, but Amos, uh, this is Amos 8, verse 11, and it says, Behold, days are coming, declares the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine for bread or a thirst for water, but rather for hearing the words of the Lord. And people will stagger from sea to sea and from the north even to the south. They will go to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. So I believe that there is, there has been, there is and will continue to be a famine for the true word of the Lord, uh, I, as well as, I believe, a, a physical famine. Um, so the Lord has been preparing us. He's been preparing his Josephs, his, his storehouses, for such a time as this. So, so if you're one of those that the Lord has been depositing the rich, the richness of his word, uh, the revelation of his word, uh, uh, the gifts of the spirit, uh, his love, his joy, his peace. Um, you are in a position to be mightily used by the Lord. And then watch how the wealth transfer comes, how it's staggered, so to speak. When the, the, the famine came, we see in Genesis 47, verses 13 through 27. Now there was no food or bread in all the land because the famine was very severe. And Joseph gathered all the money that was found in the land of Egypt. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when the money was all spent, then Joseph said, give up your livestock and I will give you food since your money is gone. So Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for every Egyptian sold his field. And as for the people, he removed them to the cities because they said, we have no land, we have no cattle, uh, we have no money, so they, we will sell ourselves as slaves. And so the people were removed to the cities one uh, from one end of Egypt's border to the other. This is verse 21 of Genesis 47. We will be Pharaoh's slaves. So you see how they're, they're, the wealth transfer was staggered. You know, as, as a family, as a person, as a family, um, as a city, as they would come to Joseph, to Egypt, uh, and 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 uh, buy or, or beg for for seed for food. Um, they first gave all their money. Uh, then when when that ran out and their their seed the the food ran out, uh, then their cattle that 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 they used of course were that were on the land. All the cattle, all the livestock. And then you know once that was was uh, gone and, and again there was no food because the famine was extended through those seven years. Uh, then they sold the actual land for food. And then they had nothing left but themselves as slaves. But it says in Genesis 47, verse 27, Now Israel lived in the land of Egypt in Goshen, and they acquired, acquired property in it and were fruitful and became very numerous. So we see here the, the contrast between the people of God and, and the world. So I think that Lord, that, that word of the Lord that, <clears throat> that it will be staggered uh, is, is definitely a word 
for us to consider. So, so I would just encourage you to get before the Lord. Uh, pray and find out uh, how he would have you positioned. Uh, and, and remember a previous word that he'd given that, that he will lead us step by step. So you don't have to fear. You don't have to be confused. Uh, just know that your Father in heaven, Jesus, your good shepherd, will lead you step by step, take you by the hand, and lead you into paths of righteousness, lead you beside still waters, lead you to green pastures for his namesake. Amen. Amen.